Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another College and Career Pathways, where every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we provide you with information on various colleges and universities, financial aid resources, uh, technical programs, skilled trade professions, career readiness skills, all designed to help you make the best career decisions possible. I'm Tony Curitan, your host, and we are with uh, Michigan School Government Credit Union, and we are winding down our financial literacy series. And um, Colleen, welcome back. We're so glad to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been been a little while, and I'm happy to be back. Uh, today we're looking at a little different topic, not something uh, I get into all the time with. Uh, very commonly is insurance, intro to insurance. But that doesn't mean it's not important. It's it's very important. Uh, so we're going to go over kind of an introduction to insurance today. And as usual, I have a nice uh, video for you. So I will see you in a minute. Oh, I got to make sure to share the sound. Hello, what do we have here? Planet Earth, home to all of mankind's greatest achievements. Superglue, the atomic clock, the hula hoop, and yet none so grand, so thrilling as insurance coverage. Oh. Life, auto, health, home, travel. These are but a few of the diverse insurance policies available to you. Who, me? Yes, you. Insurance is a contract that offers full or partial financial compensation for loss or damage caused by an uncontrollable event. In exchange, the insured individual pays a sum of money known as a premium. Okay, but how does it all work? How does it all work, you ask? By taking out an insurance policy, you are actually paying the insurer to assume your financial risk in the situation specified in your contract. Take little Jenny here, and her darling pet cat. Help. Little Jenny pays $20 a month to have her furry friend insured against accidents and illnesses, thus transferring her personal financial risk should her cat need medical attention. But what's this? Calamity! Little Jenny's cat has broken its leg during hockey practice, racking up $2,000 in vet visits, x-rays, and tiny cat crutches. Thankfully, little Jenny's pet insurance policy covers broken bones and reimburses her for the medical expenses after she files a claim. How are insurance companies able to pay for all those emergencies? Insurance providers operate by pooling the risk of a large number of policyholders. Little Jenny is just one of many pet owners paying premiums every month. Over the lifetime of the insurance policy, some pets will have medical emergencies and most will have no complications at all. The premiums of many are pooled to pay out the emergencies of a few. Huh. Does everyone pay the same premium? No, they do not. <clears throat> I, uh, I mean, you might be asking yourself, does everyone pay the same premium? Insurance providers set premiums that allow the system to function and generate a profit. If premiums are set too low, if emergency costs are higher than anticipated, or if more individuals make claims than expected, the insurance provider will lose money. Insurance providers, therefore, apply statistics and mathematics to understand the amount of risk their policyholders represent and adjust their premiums accordingly. It's why your age and gender can influence your car insurance rates, or why your family medical history and lifestyle can influence your life insurance premiums. Indeed, insurance coverage is a unique system unequaled by any other financial concept on Earth. There might be stuff after the credits. You might be asking yourself if there is additional stuff after the credits. And the answer is no. There is not. 
All right. So that's a, that's a fun one there. Oh, actually, I can just move to that. Right. There we go. So intro to insurance, intro to insurance. Uh, insurance is a contract. It's an agreement between two parties uh, to cover financial compensation for loss, uh, damage for these uncontrollable events. Uh, in exchange, the uh, insured person pays a premium to the insurance company. Explaining it like that makes it sound a little complicated. So we're going to break it down just step by step. But insurance and insurance coverage is something a lot of people or a lot of young people kind of forget about or don't think to factor into their budget. Uh, they're familiar with auto insurance, uh, familiar with health insurance, but you know, rent where it says contents, that's renter's insurance. You know, if you're inside um, an apartment, I believe we've talked about that. You have to protect the stuff you own. What if your bed and dresser and computer and TV and all that stuff burns down? You'd like some compensa compensation. Uh, travel insurance, if you spend thousands and thousands of dollars booking this dream vacation, uh, and then there's a hurricane, uh, and, you, and you're like, well, I guess I'm just going to lose thousands of dollars. Well, maybe it's worth it to pay a hundred dollars or a couple hundred dollars just in case there's a hurricane and you can get your money back. So there's a lot of different ways to use insurance or to apply insurance, uh, flood insurance in case of a flood. Um, Interesting, I happened to be doing a lot of uh, driving around today, and I was listening to a podcast about the, the great fire of New York City in 1835, I know, but fire insurance companies were one of the biggest, you know, most common companies in New York, because that's what the emergency was, that's what the business was, there was fires all the time, because of the nature of, you know, they're just being wood as the you know, supply of what the buildings are mostly made of and just how over years uh, types of insurance have changed in flood insurance and wildfire insurance and areas that didn't flood before. And um, so, uh, yeah, life insurance. Uh, life insurance is different than health insurance. Health insurance is when you get sick, when you have, uh, like I said, an uncontrollable event uh, an accident, you broke your leg, you uh, got stabbed and, and they got to sew up some organs, you hurt your back, you broke a rib, you know, a, a lot of different things. It could be a, an illness, a sickness, you know, a, a cancer, dialysis treatment, uh, just an expensive surgery uh, or uh, medications like diabetes. You're going to have to be on these medications all the time for the rest of your life. So that would be health insurance, which is broken down even more into uh, separate eye insurance, vision, and separate dental insurance. But life insurance is literally insuring your life as a person. And you're probably not familiar with it because you're not, you don't have life insurance on yourself. It's not necessary. Uh, when you're older, when you get married, when you own a house, when you have children, really when you need to provide for someone or, or a family or you're expected to be the provider, the breadwinner, you know, you have responsibilities. You've agreed to that. You're fulfilling them. But if something happens, if, if you know, unexpected event, terribly you pass away, you know, when you were the breadwinner of the home, suddenly there's no income coming in, there's funeral expenses, uh, you know, life insurance can't bring the person back, but it's saying I'll pay a little bit along the way, just in case something terrible happens, there'll be a big payout, there'll be some money for my family to be able to live off of. Um, so insurance is a big expense in the sense that you you pay for it in a lot of different aspects of your life and you don't necessarily pay for all of these and all, not all of them at the same time. Uh, so how does it work? There's different kinds, but how exactly does it work? 
taking out an insurance policy, you are paying the insurer to assume the financial risk, right? If I, if I don't have any health insurance and I need surgery, well, then I have to pay for the surgery. Makes sense. But what if that surgery is $6,000 or $10,000 or the surgery is only a couple thousand dollars, but then there's the hospital stay and the medications and the anesthesiologist and it, it really, really adds up. So in order to protect yourself from this huge emergency, huge debt, all of a sudden, you're paying the insurance company a little bit at a time so that if something does happen, kind of it's their problem, so to speak. You know, they're the ones that have to take on that big expense, not you. Uh, for example, uh, pet insurance. And I remember uh, when I first learned about pet insurance, when I was a waitress and looking over uh, whether to get myself health insurance through the restaurant that I worked at and how much it was. And I saw that they offered pet insurance and I was so excited. I thought that was such a great thing. I didn't realize you actually had to pay for it. I thought it was just something that's free. No, you have to pay for it. So let's say um, I pay $20 a month to protect my cat and I have a cat right now. It's not for normal stuff. I got to pay for nail clippings, vaccines, grooming, you know, kind of typical checkups, normal things. Um, but just in case, suffers a broken leg, falls down the stairs, um, eats something out of the trash, you know, gets this terrible illness, wanders outside and gets bit and attacked. It could be all kinds of things. Um and that's really expensive. I mean, a pet health care is really only slightly cheaper than than people health care. Uh, I luckily, I haven't had to take on any extreme pet expenses, but i I know people, and my my parents have had to pay for uh, surgery that's thousands thousands of dollars, thousands and thousands of dollars. And you got to think about it mentally. You know, oh, that's crazy. I wouldn't pay thousands of dollars. Well, that's a member of your family. What if it was you? What if it was, you know, put it on your credit card or, you know, go into debt or let, you know, poor Kitty pass away? I mean, it's a very, very difficult choice to make. And, and you don't always have that credit card. And especially if you have an older animal or an animal that, you know, goes, goes outside, like, you know, outside cat versus an inside cat. You know, having pet insurance, you know, yeah, it costs you, let's say 200 bucks a year, who knows, 300 bucks a year, depending on the type of animal, maybe less. The likelihood that um, an emergency happens, you know, isn't any more or less, but when it breaks its bone and you have to pay for the surgery and they get a metal rod in their leg and then they got to stay overnight at the emergency pet hospital, the insurance company reimburses you and you can move on with your life and you don't have this huge you know, debt where you have to take on another loan on top of the other loans you have. You know, The concept of, of insurance is to have a safety net, to have a backup plan so that daily life can keep moving, think things can keep going. So how do insurance providers make money? And again, I want to remember trying to first learn about insurance uh, and really being angry that, wait, I pay you all year long. And if I don't make any claims, I don't get the money back. Why don't I get the money back? If I gave you the money and I didn't use it, why shouldn't I get it back? Well, if it was a loan, that's one thing, but that's not how it works. I'm paying them a little bit just in case I have to pay a lot. So like it showed, a larger pool, one policyholder, one person paying $20 a month or for your car, maybe paying $150 a month or um for your health insurance, $50 a month. For your renter's insurance, $10 a month. You know, it, it depends. But you are one of, let's say, a thousand or thousands of people who also have that same insurance company and who are also making payments every month. And likely, 
only a few of those people, you know, they only have three of those people have a pet or have a personal situation that calls for a big expense. So the contributions of the many are meant to cover and are there to cover the, the claims, the emergencies of the few. So does everyone pay the same? No. <laughs> and you can kind of guess, you say, well, you just named off a bunch of potential costs. There's averages or an average for an age or a price range for a certain type of insurance, but there's a lot of factors that go into it. I know we've talked about before, and I believe the next time I talk to you, I'm going to uh, talk about credit scores again, is credit scores is one of the factors in setting the price of your insurance, that your behavior, your financial habits, well, why should that affect the cost of insuring my car? Well, the insurance company is making a judgment call. They're looking at how you behave with your own money. Are you responsible with it? Do you follow your commitments, follow the rules? Do you go above and beyond? Uh, or do you do the bare minimum? Well, depending on how you behave around your own money, we're going to assume that you treat your own car the same way. So if we view your finances as kind of a mess, kind of irresponsible, a few late payments, you've had a car, you know, repossessed, even if it was five years ago, I see risk in the future. I see accidents. I see tickets. So I'm going to charge this person more because I have a higher expectation of having to pay out. Uh, kind of the same as a scholarship, only the opposite, unfortunately. Um, along those lines, like a scholarship, if they look at your credit and see, oh, you're very responsible with your money. You pay on time, you pay in full, you follow the rules, you're not late. I don't see us having a problem. I don't see you getting tickets or getting accidents. Of course, it may happen. That's what we're here for. But we're going to charge you a much lower rate, a much lower premium for potentially the same car, the same, you know, item, the same insurance as someone else with a different credit score. Uh, something else that could be, or something else that is taken into account, excuse me, is age. I mean, if you're a 16, 17, 18 year old, are you considered a riskier driver? I mean, yes. I mean, just by nature, you just haven't had the experience. Just, you literally haven't had the experience. I mean, if it's a brand new driver who's 30 years old, they're also just as risky. But as you get older, uh, as you've driven for more years, as you've had perhaps decades of years without accidents, you can establish a reputation of responsible driving that will save you money, you know, along the same way of your responsible financial behavior or financial responsible habits will save you money on interest rates uh, in the future. So uh, insurance companies, <laughs> insurance companies, when you see them in movies or TV shows, they're, they're usually uh, depicted as the bad guys that somehow um, uh, or, or involved in the, the villainous activity, but that's, they're not villainous. Again, they're there for the safety net. Um, you'll hear people complain about insurance costs because, like I said, sometimes if you go years and years without an emergency, it feels like you're just throwing money away, right? It feels like you're just giving it away. I pay hundreds of dollars every year and I'm not getting anything out of it. I don't have anything to show for the $600, $1,200 I spent on my auto insurance this year. Well, I haven't had any surgery or major uh, illnesses this year and I've paid hundreds of dollars in health insurance. It can feel like you're throwing money away or, or wasting your money, but- that's because you're you're riding that good time, right? You're riding where things are going well. You have to remember, you never know what's going to happen. You never know, you know, the weather. 
It could be the weather, if a tree falls on your house, uh, getting snowed in, your car accident, um, a divorce, a death in the family. I mean, there's a lot of different factors. You move to a different area. Um, I remember you know, being young, I got my very first apartment and you get your very first apartment and you figure out what your bills are. Okay, this is about how much it costs to pay for electricity. And this is about how much it costs to pay for groceries. And then I remember moving to, you know, a new apartment. And then, you know, at some point, a different apartment and always being shocked <laughs> at how much the car insurance uh, costs would change. Same one bedroom apartment or even, even sharing it, sharing someone with else a two bedroom, the zip code, depending whether I lived in uh, Rochester or Oak Park or Pontiac or Hazel Park, um, where else? Uh, West Bloomfield at one point, the car insurance would be, would be, I would be charged differently. And I'd be so mad when I'd move to say Oak Park or actually when I moved to Hazel Park and it would go up and be more expensive. And you're thinking, well, why? I'm not a different driver just because I live in a different city. Well, that's where you store the car. That's where the car is kept overnight. And in fact, whether you store the car in a closed garage or whether you store it on the street uh, affects the costs. Uh, whether, um, you know, it's in what's deemed to be a more dangerous or criminal neighborhood. There's a lot of factors. So does everyone pay the same? No, it depends on your age. It depends on where you live, your, again, financial activity, your um, uh, personal activity for health insurance. If you're a smoker, a lot of health insurance companies can expect to have to pay or they envision themselves paying a lot more uh, out in procedures, out in doctor's appointments, treatments, surgeries uh, due to uh, smoking, smoking cigarettes, smoking pipes, uh, whereas you'll save money if you declare and can prove usually even by a blood test or hair sample that you're not a smoker. If you have a gym membership, if you can show you have, you know, healthy cholesterol levels or blood pressure levels, you're taking care of yourself. You can often get a discount on health insurance. It's, it's all a juggle. It's all playing the game, right? It's all a little bit of risk. The more responsible you are, you save a little on car insurance, save a little on the car payment, save a little on runner's insurance. You're trying everything you can to learn what are the ways to A, not waste money, to B, save money, and to C, just save money by doing, by not doing anything extra, just doing what I should be doing anyway, right? How, what can I do to make sure I have enough insurance. How do I know if I have enough insurance? And this is certainly uh, something a lot of people ask them when they learn about insurance and there's so many types and they say, well, wait a minute, I don't, I don't really have any. That's okay, calm down. Your insurance, your insurance broker should assess your needs based on your details and your situation. Well, you say to yourself, well, I don't have an insurance broker. <laughs> Again, whatever insurance you're looking for, if you're looking for car insurance, whatever 800 number you call, the number on the car insurance commercial, the number on the car insurance ad, the person they have you talk to, the person you say, I'm interested in getting some insurance. I have some questions about insurance. The person they have you talk to is a broker, is someone who's going to answer your questions, help you uh, understand what type of insurance you might need, what type of coverage you might need. I mean, if your car is really old and beat up and, you know, if you have an accident, you're probably just going to junk it and get a new car. Well, that's different than if you just bought this car a year ago and it's it's your brand new baby. And, you know, if anything happens to it, I'd, I'd be devastated. If I'd, I would pay anything to get it, you know, back. Well, OK, well, you know, I'm going to charge you a little different. If you're thinking about life insurance, if you're thinking about renter's insurance, literally just Google, you know, or, or ask someone, you know, what renter's insurance company do you have? Uh, and quite often. Whoever you use for, let's say, auto insurance will also offer renter's insurance or will also offer life insurance. 
Um, and you can get a discount, you know, a bundling. You hear that term on a lot of commercials. Oh, bundle your insurance, get homeowner's insurance. And, you know, let's say the dad's car and the mom's car and maybe one or two of the kids cars insurance and get all these different, uh, maybe another life insurance, uh, different insurance packages all under kind of one roof. It's, it's bundling and you'll save money. Now, if you live by yourself, you know, there's only so much you can do. But again, you always want to ask, is there something I can do to save? Well, actually, I think that's the next question here. In case of home insurance, complete an inventory. You only need to protect as much as you feel need, needs protecting. Uh, if you don't have a family to protect, you don't necessarily need to pay for life insurance. If you don't have your own apartment, you don't have any really valuable things, you still live with your parents, your parents will have homeowner's insurance on your items. But if you live on your own, if you drive your own car, you know, if it's something important to you, if it's having to pay for yourself going to the hospital, having to pay for a new pair of contacts, a new pair of glasses, um, you know, a root canal, uh, then it's insurance, then it's important to ask out and ask and seek out insurance. What is replacement cost? Replacement cost is the total cost your insurance company would pay to either fully reconstruct your home or to replace your car or replace the items. So for instance, with homeowner's insurance, I just bought my home recently a couple of years ago. So based on the purchase price and based on uh, a lot of you know factors about the house, if this house were to disappear and we would have to rebuild it to look exactly the same, how much would it cost? Okay, now if we had to spend that much, now how much are we going to charge her, right? Same thing. If your car is a junker, they're not going to charge you as much insurance. If your car is a real, a much newer car, it's uh, more expensive to replace. It maybe is a foreign car with foreign car, foreign parts or a luxury car. Um, so the more expensive it is to replace, the higher the insur insurance would be. What is a deductible? And you'll hear people uh, mention this with insurance. I still have to pay the deductible. Or, oh, well, what's your deductible? Deductible is kind of a little bit like a loophole in insurance. Deductible is something you still have to pay. Now, your premium, we discussed, let's say it was that $20 for pet insurance or maybe $50 a month for health insurance. That's the monthly uh, fee premium you pay just to have the insurance, okay? A deductible is a portion that you are responsible for paying when you make a claim, when this uncontrolled or uncontrollable event happens. For example, if your, homeowner, if your home insurance policy has a $1,000 deductible and the tree falls on it and it costs $5,000 to fix it, well, you put a claim in with the insurance company, you're going to have to pay the first thousand dollars and the insurance company covers the rest at four thousand. So the deductible you only pay when that emergency happens and you may say to yourself, well, I, I want the cheapest deduct. I want nothing. I want a zero deductible okay, you can get a $500 deductible or maybe even a $0 deductible, but what you pay each month is going to be more expensive. Uh, agreeing to, okay, I'll contribute a little more uh, when the emergency happens, I'll pay less each month. Um, so sometimes, I mean, that $1,000 deductible, that can still be a real emergency cost. I mean, $500, having to come up with a $500 deductible uh, when your catalytic converter gets stolen. You know, I didn't do anything wrong. And now I still got to pay, you know, for a rental car and pay for a $500 deductible. Or when I get into a car accident, you know, the repair of the car is covered, but I still got to pay that first $500. Well, that's part of the plan that I chose that I discussed. You know, maybe I could pay less each month, but then I'd have to pay 
a full thousand dollars if something happened. It's a personal choice. How can I lower my insurance costs? Well, I just mentioned one, one way, uh, lower or higher, uh, increase or decrease, excuse me, your deductible payment. Um, if you're willing to pay more in case of an emergency, um, you know, it'll be a little cheaper and you're kind of crossing your fingers that that emergency doesn't happen. Um, you can lower your insurance costs by comparison shopping. You know, just because you've been with one company for many years, it's still worth every now and again, you know, asking around, how, how much do you guys uh, pay for car insurance or calling another company? And how much would you, how much would I have to pay for this if I uh, transferred to you, if I moved to you? You don't necessarily have to stay with the same company all the time. Um, and sometimes you can find especially good deals on insurance depending on your career or your occupation. Um, there's Mimic I have, which is an educator's uh, insurance uh, that I was eligible to get uh, starting when I started working in, in education or in schools, um, which to me, I think it's much cheaper. It's much cheaper to me than when I was paying, you know, Allstate before or uh, some of the other ones before, but you got to research, you know, if you're young and in high school and in college, a lot of times showing your report card, showing your transcript that you, you know, you're getting good grades. That's kind of the equivalent maybe of your credit report. You don't have a credit report to show, but it's your reputation. Hey, I take my grades seriously. You know, this should equate to me taking, you know, my driving seriously. So there are certainly ways to, um, lower your insurance costs uh, if you need to, or if you're looking to. Oh, and that's all. Uh, are there any questions that you can uh, think of, Ms. Kirtson, right away or from the uh, audience? Well, um, actually, you covered everything pretty thoroughly. And uh, you've given a very simplistic explanation on how insurance works, you know, the many and the few. <laughs> That's an excellent definition. Um, so yeah, excellent presentation. You you covered any, you know, everything regarding that. Are there any questions from you guys? If not, then we will bring this session to a close. Thank you guys for joining and thanks so much, uh, Colleen. Excellent presentation as always. Thank you. Thank and you. we will see you all next time. Everybody have a great day. Have a good day. Bye.